of O Lord, forever, O Yahweh Most High, your word is settled, it is settled, it is established in heaven. Because you rule, and because you reign, and because you have all authority and might and power, and no man can stay your hand when you get ready to judge. No man can stay your hand when you get ready to deliver. Oh, to the king, immortal, eternal, invisible, that dwells in the light that's not approachable by man, whom no man has seen nor can see, to you be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Oh, Father, God of mercy, look upon us as we come together today to honor your word, yeah. to honor your son, yeah. to make ourselves subject to whatever it is you yeah. have to say. Then, Lord God of heaven, Yahweh, please empower us to do your will. Empower us to live this life. Empower us to know what it means to walk in your spirit rightfully as we go through this word. Open my mouth to speak truthfully, factually. Any mistakes or anything that I say that's wrong, help me to get it right. And if not, to come back and get it right later. Father, let it only be a mistake of the head and not a mistake of the heart. Lord, look at all of our bodies, our afflictions, and strengthen us. Give us what we need as we honor you by honoring your word, your revelation. Amen. Amen and amen. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm very happy now. Why am I happy? We're moving through this 119th Psalm and now we're at the Lamed. Now, for those of us that know the English alphabet, it would be the L. The Lamed is what would be the same thing as an ox goat, or you could use as a shepherd use a staff or whatever it is that would have some type of crook on it. And they could pull the sheep back, or if they need to break his leg because he keeps wandering, they could break his leg and bind him up so he quit, quit wandering. You all remember when my dad used to love that hymn, I was, was a wandering sheep. Mm -hmm. I did not love the foal. Well, sometimes the shepherds had a way. They love it. One day we're going to have to sing that song. I was, because I know I was a wandering sheep. I might have been a goat, but anyway, I know I've been a wandering sheep at times in my life, but God has been good. Yahweh's chastisement put that thing on my backside and got hold of that string in my mind, and now my mind is right. Well, today we're going to talk about what does it mean to be led by the spirit of God, of Yah. I, I really have to keep saying Yah, God, Yahweh, God, because we live in a world now when you mention God, people don't know who you're talking about. You say you love God and they say, I love God too. And their God might be a Luciferian doctrine right. or a gospel right. because they actually are in the lodge, the Masonic lodge, and they don't want me to say it, but I'm going to tell the truth. Now, if that's what Albert Pike say, I believe him over any Prince Hall person. I believe when you start looking at things that get in touch with the Kabbalah, then we got a problem because it's going to militate, it's going to fight against the word of God. Anytime you'll put the Bible and the Quran side by side and say it's equal, that's a damnable lie. Right. You can't even read the Quran and it doesn't tell you that it's equal. The Quran itself says, if you doubt, you doubt what Muhammad says, it says, go to those that were before him, the prophets. And they don't mention him ever. 112 surah says that Allah begets none. He doesn't beget any sons. He doesn't have a son. There's none like unto him. My Bible tell me from the very beginning when God made man, when I started looking at Luke chapter 3, it That's says right. Adam was the son of God. Yeah. The Bible tell me in the 6th chapter of Genesis, when the sons of God saw the daughters of men, when the Benihah Elohim oh, yeah. saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. That's right. 
They took them wives of all that they chose, but they called them the sons of God. David's son would be called the son of God. God says in uh, the Bible, tell me, I'm starting to feel good. I feel my juices flowing. Uh, in the book of Exodus chapter 4, verse 22 and 23, you go, Moses, yeah. and you tell Pharaoh, Israel, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Let him go. I'll kill you. Now, when you hear God talking to a God like that, you, 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 you're doing something. Somebody will say, Tim, you call Pharaoh a God. I know what I'm doing. Because of the fact there was a spiritual being. Mm -hmm. There is a spiritual entity. When we say in English, God, we wrap around it a Western, listen to me, a Western Occidental. When I say Occidental, you all, I learned some big words a long time ago. But we all usually know what Oriental is. The opposite of that on the other side is Occidental. We wrap around an almighty God, the one God, the maker and the creator of the ends of the earth who thinks not, who would judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in kingdom. That's not what the Bible means every time it mentions the word God. Because the word Elohim is dealing with spiritual entities that have power, that they can influence, and that they can damn people it's a residency. It's a place of residency. And those beings know that there will be a time when the most high God destroys them. That's why they asked Yeshua Jesus, did you come to destroy us before the time? We know that there's a time. We, we are not nothing like people say. People say the gods are nothing. Don't read the Bible with a fifth grade mindset. Read the Bible the way it's given and the way that the Bible speaks of itself and the way the Bible speaks anthropomorphically, that means a man, and the way it speaks of beings that are celestial, it speaks of them as being able to think and to reason and to be able to rebel. They are not, and to teach, thank you, precious love, because the first one taught Satan in the garden, eat this baby girl, if you eat this, you'll be wise. You'll be like one of us. Not the most high, one of us, an Elohim, a spiritual being. Now understand this. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter chapter 3 that we can hasten the day of the Lord's coming. I believe it's 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 11. What the demons, what those other beings want us to do is to play around and not be serious about God's word. And so it will prolong the time before their final judgment. You check it up and make sure I'm right, precious love. There you go. That's the kind of woman you need when you marry men. Marry somebody that loves God's word, don't That's want you right. to be wrong at home first and in public second. Because if you're not wrong in public and you're wrong at home, you'll give her hell. But here, and I do mean uh, an excruciatingly yes. painful life. But here's the deal. They know. And for those that are theologically astute and think they know better than what the word of God say, the word of God say that the children of Israel, because of their disobedience and because they wanted to go back to Egypt and eat the leeks, the onions, and the garlic, and they wanted to go back to the God that they served, Joshua said they served gods on the other side of the flood, so I'm with him. He was there. He knows. I will submit to you that they made Yahweh wait. 40 years to take them in. They prolonged the time that the kingdom of Yah would start executing this judgment on the world. Did you get that? Yes. Now don't tell me you can't make Yahweh wait because look at your own life. How many of us have fornicated, adulterated, homosexuated, lied, did whatever we shouldn't and now here we are at this point in our life and we are still trying to go back and make up a lost time for things that we already should have been doing. We should have already been greater in God. We should have already have bought forth more fruit to repentance than we have. And many of us are still in sin and we're not afraid. I visited the grave of my daddy this week. I came to Gainesville to take care of some business and I had to go deal with some of some taxes. And it's right up there by the cemetery. 
So I saw my daddy's grave, my aunt Alberta's grave, and I saw my grandmother's grave, and I saw a lot of other graves to get to it. Do you know, these are people that I knew. These are people that I was around. These are people that knew me, and they are dead in so far as the top side of the ground. They are dead. And I remember being around them when they weren't thinking about dying. My day will come. Your day will come. And if you don't know what it means to be led by the Spirit of God, when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you'll stay in the valley of the shadow of death. You won't go through it. You'll walk in it. You'll be there. We take God in the words of the late Oscar Owen too lightly. We act like we got forever to live. We still try to impress people. We still mistreat our families. We treat our families in ways we wouldn't treat anybody else. And God is going to damn every one of us for it. You think I'd come here and preach the butt naked word of God without chaser and give it to you straight and go home and mistreat Anne? You really think she would sit here and listen to me talk like this? And I'm at home raising hell? That's not, she's not that kind of hypocrite, you all. She told me one time, she said, I wouldn't even come with you no more. She said that to me. If that, but you know what? That's how that's, you set your boundaries. You see, when people, when people go led, be led by the Spirit, there's two ways to be led by the Spirit. I've already told you last week, I'm not going to go back and tell you exactly where it is this week. I'll give you the address and you can drive there on your own time. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, it tells you there's another spirit, there's another gospel, and I would submit to you by there being another spirit, there's being another gospel that people are led by the spirit, but it's not the spirit of Yah. You, what you think does not make it be the spirit of God. Just because you think it and it's something good to do and it's something kind to do and because somebody let you get away with it, it doesn't mean that it's the spirit of God to lead you. Now let's get into the word because I could preach without even looking at the Bible right now because I feel it in my soul. I, I don't want to quote Stevie Wonder, but I do feel it all over. <laughs> the Bible tells me in the 119th Psalm, that that 89th verse starts out with Lamed, which would be the Hebrew letter, what we call L, or in Greek would be called lambdas. Either way, it's going to be la, 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 la. It's the la sound, okay? Now, if Dre is already there or somebody there, I'll let them read the next eight verses from 89 down to the mem. The, so that's 89 through 96. Eight little verses. Forever, O Yahweh. Thy word is settled in heaven. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth, and it abides. They continue this day according to thy ordinances, for all are thy servants. Unless thy law had been my delight, I should have then perished in my affliction. I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. I am not. Save me, for I have sought thy precepts. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me, but I will consider thy testimony. I have seen an end of all perfection, but thy commandment is exceeding broad. Ooh, so, so beautiful. So beautiful. When you look, I hate when my voice do that. Now I'm going to just change it so it quit, quit, quit sounding like a horse. So I flip over to another <clears throat> to another side. Okay, now that I've flipped over to another side where it doesn't sound as hoarse, I'm making you all laugh, but that's working for all seven. So you forget that. In the 89th is an ox goad. And for those that don't know what an ox goad is, let's use a picture of a cane with a hook. It's to lead, it's to push, is to instruct. It can instruct by pulling. It can instruct by pushing back. It can it can instruct by popping upside the head. Okay, 
I'm just telling you what the truth is. I'm not making this up. So hear the word forever. This is where we're starting, where it says forever, O Lord, your word is established in heaven. When we start looking at this, we're going to start being able to see the picture. But before I give you the whole picture, I just want you to get something right. I, I want to get this off the top before we even go into the, to the word picture. When he says forever, hey, Olam, when he says, Le Olam, your word is established forever, that means it doesn't mean if it was 100 years ago. It doesn't mean if it's 2,500 years ago. It doesn't mean if it's in the book of Genesis and what you say, the generations of Noah, the generations of Adam, which is called Toledoth. It doesn't matter if a person tells you that the law is inconsequential and God's word got to be modernized. They are telling you a damnable lie. His word is established in heaven. No one can go up there and break it. No one can go up there and change it. It stands. It is established in heaven. That ought to give you some security. You want to be led by the Spirit? And if the Spirit tells you in your church, you don't speak in tongues, lest it's by force, two or three, and let one interpret. If God's word is established in heaven, you don't let your pastor, you don't let Tim Merritt, you don't let your organization change what he says. It says his word is established in heaven. Do you hear what the word of God is saying? If it says if you steal a man, if you buy a man that's been stolen, you should be put to death. You are wicked. You are ungodly. You are walking under a death penalty. It does not change because America did it to us and other countries do it. And Muslims right now are doing it. The people in Libya. It doesn't matter if the United States government did it to our ancestors. It's wicked. His word was established before they ever wrote a constitution in this United States. Do you hear the word of God? You want to be led by the word of God. It's not what you call a thing. It's knowing what his word say. How do you know this? First John 4 and 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try spirit, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. You think that a person is a false prophet just because every time you come, you got a prophecy that has never come to pass. Oh, you're going to be great. You're going to be healed. You're going to have a ministry. That's being a seer. And you get captivated because somebody tells you something that come to pass. You're close to being a cursed child. You're cursed to being plucked up by the roots. That's what Jude says, withered like clouds that come without water, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. That's why you didn't tell me what verse it is in Jude. If you can't read one page of Jude, you're not ready for real Bible class. You still want to play in bubble gum. You still want to say, well, Abraham is the father of Isaac and Jacob. So what? What meaneth that? What meaneth that? Abraham was unable to even have an erection. You want to start talking about what it means? It means that God rejuvenated him and gave him life from the dead. Tim, where do you get that from? Because Romans chapter 4 said he was good as dead. Dead men don't walk around having erections. And why you're being sexual? I'm trying to get you to see God's word. Trying to get you to see. You start thinking things are lightweight and you're not even going into the meat. Say so he was good as dead, staggered, not at the promise. And I'm going to tell you something. Listen, it's this Sarah, the same thing. Her womb, good as dead. She laughed. Did she laugh, Rick? She laughed. She laughed. Told God she didn't laugh. And he. Uh, you did laugh. Don't, don't you ever and, and, oh, remember the old folks say, don't spute me. <laughs> it wasn't dispute. Don't spute me. Say so you, yeah, don't play either. And at the time of life he came back. But here's the point. 
You want to talk about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you need to go deeper. How long are we going to be stupid? So his word is established in heaven. He brought life to, from the dead to Abraham. And that's why Abraham is a considered great man in the Bible is because he believed God against hope. So when he says forever your word is established in heaven, it wasn't just for Abraham. It wasn't just for Isaac. It wasn't just for the apostles. It's for us. You believe every spirit if you want to, but you try the spirits by the word of God. You tried the spirits by the word of God. If throwing a rod on the ground and it's spiritual and it makes a serpent come to being, then Janess and Jumbray were righteous. Janess and Jumbray, that's what Paul calls them in the book of 2 Timothy. That's the one when I was a boy, where they come from? I didn't read it in the Bible, but you, when you get past just reading and you start reading the stuff that Paul read, you'll know. But here's the thing, they withstood Moses. The Egyptians were able to do a lot of miracles, but God told the people, let me tell you something about you all that want to see seers, that you all want somebody to prophesy over you and lay hands on you and push you down on the floor and you think that make you righteous. How dumb can you be? You want to be slain in the spirit. I want to be alive in the spirit. Be slain in the spirit. Even your terminology is churchified. I, wanted my, I want my language to be bibliified, okay? Now, here's the thing. You want that, and you like that, but in Deuteronomy chapter 13, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the street. I ain't going to give you the house, mama. Deuteronomy chapter 13, Moses said this. If a prophet come around you, and he say something, and he lead you the wrong way, and the man has to be spiritual because what he says come to pass. God said, I'm, he said, I'm testing you. I'm testing you to see if you're going to follow me or no. That, that's the way it says it in, in my Bible. Now, your Bible might be more modern and say, follow me or not. He said, but what he's doing is thrusting you out of the way. That is what the demons do. That's what the rebellious sons of God do. The rebellious son that I call the Beneha, and the reason I call him Beneha, Ben means son. You all already know that because of the fact Benjamin, um, Israel's son, that means son of the right hand. So you're used to using the word Ben, okay? They're the sons of God. So now here, let's go to the Lamin now. You are you are you all happy? Yeah. Are you all feeling good? So it says so you got the arch gold. And then you have you have the beautiful summit kid. You got this thing here that we we deal with when we are looking at the word of God. So we got the ein. Well, let me give give it to you like in the picture because if you don't know the letters, it I want to make it where you can see it. There's a picture of an eye. There's a picture of the ox gold. There's a picture of chaotic water, and then there's a picture of the ox gold. Let me put it all together with an eye being led through chaos. With the eye being led through chaos, God's word still leads. So he says forever your word will lead through chaos. If you want to be led by the spirit, you cannot bypass the word of Yah. For those that don't like Yah, you cannot bypass the word of God Almighty. When he chose the picture of an eye being led through chaotic waters, that's what the mem is in Olam, the M is water, it's, cha it's chaotic waters. You, you got to be led by that. So it says forever. For how long to be led by the word? It didn't say forever, O oh Lord, your spirit. It didn't say forever, O oh Lord, your son. I understand that's true, but the emphasis of the writer here through the Spirit in this whole 119th Psalm is trying to get you to have a foundation that you can have what you need. Make it plain, Tim, so people can understand. If this was a bottle of 150 proof liquor, I don't have to try to get drunk. All I got to do is keep doing this. Keep drinking. Keep drinking, and eventually I'll be drunk or pass out, and they still call that drunk. 
If you take God's word and you continually eat it, drink of the water of it, meditate on it, speak on it, stay in it, you will become with the spirit if you have the mindset to obey it. If you're just doing it so you can make money, you haven't read it with the mindset to obey it. You're using it to control people. But when your mind is made up that this is his word and it's settled in heaven, his word will lead you. His word will lead you and the spirit will guide you with the word. You can have the word and be divorced of the spirit. But more, most, most times I find people have what they call the spirit and divorced of the word. Spirit told me this. Spirit told me that I felt your feelings are not the word of God. Let me say that up to the camera. Your feelings are not the word of God. Your prosperity does not mean you're walking in God's power. If people think you're famous, it doesn't mean you're walking in God's word. You'll be dead in a hundred years. I guarantee you that if you're watching this. And if you're not, you can go and find me and tell me my you tell me your guarantee was my guarantee was wrong in a hundred years. Go do that. Go to my grave site or whatever it is and say you were wrong. But God's word will still be settled. You are just like the flower of the grass. You will wither. You are just like the grass that they used to put in the underground ovens. It was up the day they cut it down instead of fine cooking, it would be gone. Whatever, oh Lord, your word is settled, is established, is rooted, in the Bible said, in heaven. Verse number 90. Do you feel good about that? Yeah. You want to be led by the Spirit? Yeah. Don't go seeking the Spirit. You ask God to fill you with the Spirit while you read his word. Yeah. Ask God to fill you with his Spirit while you're reading and obeying his word. It's a gift that he gives to us. It's a gift when you are in his word. He knows how to give you what you need. You won't have to go and manipulate people. You won't have to go around and act like you're good. That's the biggest problem we have in this world. People think they're good because they come to that dumb church. You're not good because you come to church. That devil come to church. Whores come to church. Pastors come to church. They're whore, homosexuals, adulterate, and beat people out of their money and take things from house, their cars, their stock, their insurance. Yeah, they do it. Pastors do all of that and lay up with the boys. Coming to church don't make you a child of God. Just like if I go watch the Falcons, it don't put me on the team. I can say we won all day, but I bet you Tim Merritt won't get a check. I won't get a check and I won't get free food and I won't get to hit anybody. Now, there's one good thing I won't get hit, but... Uh, <laughs> And it says in verse 90, thy faithfulness is unto all, all generations. Establish the earth and it abideth. The beautiful thing about that, when we see his faithfulness is to all generations, you have the ox gold right there again. Your faithfulness is to lead all generations. Did you get that name? Not just the one in the days of Adam. Not just the one in the days of Noah or David or the Messiah. His faithfulness. I want you to understand these first three verses. Three, read those first three verses again kind of quickly because I want to give you a synopsis right quick. Forever, O Yahweh, thy word is settled in heaven. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth and it abides. They continue this day according to thine ordinances. For all are thy servants. It's showing the eternality. It's showing the power of Yahweh God to set that up to control the earth and to control those that are in it. It's forever settled in heaven. And then he said, your faithfulness, you can be depended on. You will not be let down. You are the one that is in truth. Faithfulness means to be true. Faithfulness means to be steadfast. Faithfulness means to be unchangeable. You'll keep your word. Your faithfulness leads all generations. You have established the earth and it abides. I might not be able to see everything about your faithfulness when I look at my situation, but when I can look at the sea, I can still see the earth. 
I can still see the sun. I can still see the moon. I can still see people. I can see that your faithfulness abides forever. If I can see it, I can be able to look and say it's got to be in the spiritual. And I should quit my mess. I should quit my junk. I should stop. I should say it doesn't matter if somebody makes fun. You used to do this. I don't give a tinker's damn what you think about what I used to be. I care what I am now. And for those that don't like me saying tinker's damn, a little pot would have a hole in it. The tinker would come and he takes some solder, put some mud on the bottom, melt the solder in the pan, and then it would fill in that spot. Once it's filled, they throw the mud. That's the tinker's dam. I don't care as much as a little piece of mud. What you think? Yes, I've been wicked, but his word is forever. It's settled. It's faithful. I've seen it, and I know by him being faithful, he was going to get me one day. I was not good. I was good to me, but I knew God's word said I was wicked. We can be good in our own mind, and people know we're wicked. And people, even on Facebook, know you're wicked. They see your memes. They see your posts. They know what you're about. They know what you do. And they got you feeling you okay. They don't have no heaven for you. But God's word is settled. All this identity theft and things going on, and people think they're getting away with it, y'all's watching. Sometimes people will give you an identity that's not even what you have. Who told us we're African American? All of us not African American, but I ain't going into that right now because I'll get mad. <laughs> it says it's established and it abideth. The point being made here look at Yah, He's faithful. Look at the earth and what you see, it shows you His faithfulness. Then it says they continue this day. That was up to the time it was written according to your ordinances. Now I want you to check something out when it says, he has established the earth and it abideth. Let's go to a, take a little trip in the New Testament, a little short trip. I think it'll do you good. We go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 17. You go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 17, you'll get a chance to see something about his faithfulness. Dree, when you get there, start reading for Tim. And he is before all things. This is talking about our Lord, the Christ. He is before. Before means he comes before, and before also means preeminent. You got to understand, before doesn't just mean like I came before you. If it's the daddy in the house, and the house is in proper order, he could be the last one to come in the house, but Josiah, isn't he before you? Okay. <laughs> so what I'm saying is before speaks on both levels. That's why when God says, have no God before me, don't have them in our face, and don't put their opinion before mine. Okay, got it. Here's before all things talking about the Christ. What else? And by him, all things consist. Now, listen to what the New Testament writer is saying. When you look at what is being said here in the 91st verse here, it says, they continue this day according to your ordinances. He is before all things. He is before everything that's established. He is before every precept. He is before every judgment. He is before every person. He is before every circumstance. He is before everything that you think that nature controls. No, he is before all things, and by him all things hold together. They consist. Next verse. And he is the head of the body. The church. You think your pastor is the head of the church or the called out ones. You think that your assembly, you think your feelings, you think that when you say you're in the spirit, you can go against the word of God. And the Yeshua of the Bible says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words, they are settled in heaven. They will not pass away. He is before all things. And by all by him all things consistent. He is the head of the body, the church. What else does it say about it? Was the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that he might 
born from the dead. Now see, people take that when they're in the Jehovah's Witness, the Watchtower, Bible and Tract Society out of Brooklyn, New York. They got people going around selling magazines and then they talking about it, take a donation and build buildings for Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and they never showed up and made all these prophecies saying the world going to end in 1941, 1914, 1972 and the world did not end. Liars. When it says the firstborn is talking about preeminent. Israel wasn't the first nation. How? How, Dree? When, the, when we look in the 10th chapter of the book of Genesis, we see all those nations. There was not an Israel in those 70 people that were the nation. We, we don't get an Israel till, the, till Yahweh tells Abraham chapter 12, Genesis. 10 is gone. Chapter 11 is gone. The nations are already spread in chapter 11 with the Tower of Babel. That's chronologically correct, Tim. Yes, it is. And in the 12th chapter, he meets Abram. Come here, boy. I'm going to talk to you. I want you to get up and get out of the way from your family. I'm going to make a nation out of you. You see, because I've got these other nations allocated to other celestial beings, and they're supposed to be to help, to rule, but they're doing their own thing. Where you get that from? Deuteronomy 32 and 8 said when the Most High separated the nation. Deuteronomy 32 and 8, for those of you that are writing, the Most High separated them according to the sons of God. Better manuscripts. The Septuagint says the angels of God. Your Dead, Scree Dead Sea Scroll says when he separated them, he did it according to the sons of God. 70 nations, 70 different entities. But when the Most High says, I'm going to make a nation out of Israel, Israel's going to be my inheritance. One man, one God, one spirit, one word, which is the one God. We're going to take this one man and by him sticking with my statutes, my commandments and my ordinances, he's going to bless all the nations and all of the nations will be blessed through him. And whoever blesses him, because I like him, he'll be blessed. Whoever curses him, because I like him, will be cursed. Don't you want to be with that? That's forever, that's forever settled. Don't you want to be in that family? He is before all things, and by him all things consist. He is the head of the body. I just want to stop. I don't want to go anymore to the first one. I've already broke that down. I want you to look at one other verse, because now I'm speeding up the time. I'm not going to cut the content, but I'm just speeding up a little bit. Go for me to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. And the instance that I'm making in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2, but they continue according to thy ordinances so that you can see that you can have confidence in the forever settled word of Yah. You don't ever have to go around and try to figure out well the spirit tell me this and the spirit tell me that. I'm not denigrating the spirit. If I was emphasizing the spirit today, I would emphasize the spirit. But right now this writer is saying, look, everything you need is in the word. You can't get the word of God and going to live by it without the spirit because he has to open it up to you. But you got to make the effort and seek it. It'll be in this passage. Have you got there yet? Read for Tim. So you, if you want to. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in time as unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these days, these last days, spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. In the 30s, in the 15th second version, he's saying God has spoken before through these prophets. Now he speaks through his son. He doesn't validate what they said, but whatever his son said, it's the totality of what they said, and it's the fulfillment of the understanding of what that meant. And not only that, his credentials is he's made the world. The father made the world through him, okay? So, so let's make sure you get that right. The son lets you know that the word is established in heaven. The son lets you know that what they said before was established. If you're going to believe the son, you got to believe the word of God. Read, Dre. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. He is the brightness of his glory. That doesn't mean he's the father. He is the brightness of his glory. Do you understand that if you walk in with God like you should, according to Colossians chapter 1, around the 27th verse, 28 verse, Christ should be in us the hope of glory. Paul said, whom we preach, warning every man, teaching every man that we can make men be subject to Christ. Do you understand that if Christ is in you, you should not be walking around saying all men have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's men without God. When you come to God, you have reached the glory of God. When 
when you reach Christ, not on your own, constitutionally, you can reach the glory of God. It's imputed and imputes his righteousness to us. Woo! I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. When we was in the army, to make us say we like it, we love it, we want more of it when we did. <laughs> you made more push-ups and more running. It says, he being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, when he had by himself did what? When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. I want you to just feel what is said in that verse, who be in the brightness of his glory, he is the express image of the spirit of God in human flesh. He upholds all things. Do you get it? His statutes, his commandments, his ordinances, the sun, the moon. Let me say it like this. Everything physical and everything that you don't see this physical. So this writer is saying in verse 91, they continue this day according to thine ordinances. And that means they continue according to his judgments, the judgments that he's put out. It has nothing to do with what we want. It's, all, it's a God thing, okay? It's his regulations. Look at the next verse. It says, not the next verse, but the, um, not you dream, but me. It continue according to your ordinances. I like this verse here. For all are thy servants. This is very important for us to see. Because if we don't begin to realize that all of his servants, we'll begin to think that we are the only people that's supposed to serve God. We'll be thinking that we can walk around in the spirit. We don't know what the spirit is. So what I'm going to try to do is get dream, go back to Colossians chapter 1. But we need to work there for a minute. Go to the 8th verse of Tim. Colossians chapter 1, verse 8. Who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. Colossians 1 and 8. Yes. Okay. For this cause we also say we heard it. Do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I just need you to understand. It's, it was important for Paul for people to know God's will with all spiritual wisdom and understanding. You're going to learn that by his word. You're not going to get it by osmosis, by just talking about, I got the spirit. Okay. It's not going to work like that. Read some more, please, Tree. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Now I want you to drop to verse 16. So what we have here is that he wants you to know what God's will is. He wants you to have his understanding. He wants you to walk in it because God's word is established in heaven. And so he's telling you, this is how you're going to be able to walk to please God. Now, for the sake of you, Dre, when you think that wasn't what I wanted, my computer was acting up. But because I know what Colossians chapter 1 talk about, I knew that Paul was going to be encouraging the people to stay in the word of God. So when it stopped acting up, I could take you to the verse I wanted to. It wouldn't have mattered if you had went to Colossians 1 verse 10. It's still going to be the same good juice. Now the 16th verse, please. For by him were all things created. For by him all things created. Why are we reading this, Tim? <laughs> we're reading this because it says, for all are thy servants. So I want you to understand the depth of what we're looking at with this Lamed being taught, being guided, being led. It says, all of thy servants. And now in Colossians it says, for by him the Christ, all things are created. What else? And that are in earth. Yes, whether. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Those are terms for the spiritual beings that I talked about earlier. I knew what I was doing when I was talking about the sons of God. I knew it. I wanted your mind to start thinking about things on a heavenly level. I want you to understand all things are created by him and for him. That does not just mean humans. It means whatever it is in heaven and whatever it is on earth, no matter what kind of being it is, it says they are 
thy servant. Even God's word serves him. Read some more. And is before all things, and by him all things consist. That's good enough. Now take me to Isaiah. I want you to see the servitude of his word. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6. I want you to see the servitude of his word. You want to be led by the spirit? You want to be led like a shepherd with his ox gold or with his staff leading you? Get into his word. Get in there and stay. Don't just let your culture lead you. Don't just let your mind. Don't just let your greed. Don't just let what you can get away with. God is going to judge us. We're going to be dead, saints. You're going to lay with your face tight. Toilet paper or newspaper stuffed in your mouth and different cavities of your body. You'll be sewn together. You'll have embalming food in you. And somebody have you laying on a cold slab. How do you know, Tim? I went and saw my daddy. I said, that's my daddy I want to see. Let me go in the room and see. He looked enough like me. I want to get instructions. I did. I figured I look enough like my daddy that if I go look, that will help me to even get more serious. I didn't go because I had a morbid thought. I want to see. I was in there when they picked him up on the thing and, straight, and, and put him up on the thing and pushed him out of the room. But I wanted to see because I knew my day would come. I knew one day I had turned my back from God and you get to the place, you forget the seriousness of life and you get to being a fool, you get to acting, you get to fornicating, adulterating, homosexual, lying, stealing, cheating, going into other religions and you still think you're good and led by the spirit of God. It's not happening. It's not happening. And you should be able to be about Isaiah 55 by now. I gave you enough time. Seek ye Yahweh while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto Yahweh, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Read on. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. First thing I want you to understand, seek Yahweh. Seek him, you seek him through understanding what he says about his word. We can forsake his way, his death, the way that he's going. Let the unrighteous man, his thoughts, because often you think your thoughts are the spirit of God. Forsake it. Forsake your thoughts and then let him return to Yahweh and he will have mercy. And then it says to our God, he will abundantly pardon. Isn't that good? But listen to verse 8 and don't ever let it get out of your mind when you think you're good. Listen to verse 8. Don't ever let it get out of your mind when you're mistreating somebody. Listen to verse 8 when you're doing your dirt and you think you're going to get away because everybody likes it and let you do what you want to do in their church, in their home, in the school, or whatever. Get this right. If on your job you're doing stuff. I want you to hear Yahweh when you think you're in the spirit, when you got your own thoughts. What does Yahweh say in this beautiful eighth verse? You know, young folk have a thing, say, drop the mic. If God was dropping the mic, that would be a drop right there. You agree with that? If God was dropping the microphone and throwing it on the floor and walking off, that's it right there. My thoughts are not your thoughts. You like that verse, Rich? I'm glad you didn't say no because I'm like, what's wrong with it? My thoughts are what? Neither are your ways my ways, saith Yahweh. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. So, no, so quit telling me that you would never put your child out of your home. Quit telling me that you got unconditional conditional love for your child. He can stab you, cut you, rape you, and you still gonna love your child. And you ain't gonna have no, you ain't gonna ever lock him up or do anything because you got unconditional love. And if that's what you do for your child, God is the same for us. His thoughts are not your thoughts, fool. Fool, I said. Fool. Since when did the Most High God got to operate like you? He put Adam out. He put Satan down. Yeah. Children of Israel, 40 years, he killed all of them 20 years old and upward. Hell is made for the wicked. 
Because first it was made for the devil and his angels, and those that were going to go to Gehenna, they go. And the Bible shows that there is no unconditional love like that, because the wicked, the abominable, the fearful, the murderers, the sorcerers, idolaters, sorcerers, and all liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, Revelation 21 and 8, close quote. I say close, not close, close quote. Why is that, Tim? My thoughts are not yours. He's not putting wickedness in hell, mom. He's not putting adultery in hell. He's not putting sorcery. He's putting the people that do it. My thoughts are not yours. Quit trying to make me fit into your realm. My word is settled in heaven. I'm faithful. I'm faithful. Quit being stupid. Stupid. Read, read, read some more, Dream. I, I, I just wanted to hammer that because we get to thinking because your friends say you okay and your friends say you're doing this. You ain't hurting anybody. And you got these. Let me, let me harp for about 10 seconds. You got these dead gum lying, damnable actresses and actors and politicians upset because they say you are not to put babies to death and that abortion doctors should be put to death. And they should be put to death. They want to lock them up. That's righteous. The same word that they're not really a person yet is the same word that they use when they said we can lynch a nigga. I said nigga. That's what they called us. Sometimes they break it down to the nigger. And I understand the word niger is black, but they were using it derogatorily. And they use the same arguments, the non-viability of the person. And they hung us. And we said that the people that did that and did nothing about it were wrong. But how are we going to sit back as black people and we're going to let somebody say, me too? That wasn't no me too. When they were killing you all and they were raping and cutting your babies, telling you why you were pregnant. It was wrong then because God's word is settled. It's wrong now because God's word is settled. And I don't care what the thought of the American government is. It's what God's word says. That's how you be led by the spirit. You agree with what he says and the way he says it. And that, that were the, in the old days, they used to say that's the big 10-4. In other words, affirmative. Read some more, Jerry. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now feel this 10th verse. For I want you to see God's word as his servant. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and returns not thither, but waters the earth, and makes it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. In other words, I don't care whether it's rain or snow is wet. Snow melts and it waters the earth and the plants come. And it does that so that growth can take place. It listen to me. Don't just read that passage. Oh, yeah, it does make the grass grow. No, it doesn't. So growth can take place. So productivity on the earth can take place. So the animals, plants, bugs can eat off of it. Yes, some plants are able to eat off of the plants that die. They use the nutrients. So don't play with me. It has a purpose. Read some more. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. I'm telling you that go and look what happens when the water goes to the ground. Look at what happens to the plant and then understand why the plants are doing what they're doing. They are a reproductive source of food and fuel on the earth. And he says, so shall my word be what? That goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me full, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. This is why you're not growing. This is why people are not growing in y'all and they're still babies. They still struggle with the same problems that they oh, have for man. 10, 20, and 30 years. If a person was still in the third grade for 10, 20, and 30 years, you think something's wrong. If a person still is just delivering paper and all they get is $10 a week, and the opportunity was there to work inside the cool office and make 20. You realize something ain't right. The word is given to make you grow. The word is given to make you bud, to make you grow up so somebody can eat off of your life and somebody can benefit to you. 
and the word is for your fuel. Do you understand the plant's life is where you get fuel of the plant? You get it. It's to give you fuel. You want the spirit of God? You want the fuel to go? If y'all don't have electricity in my computer, it doesn't have the fuel that it's needed. You don't have a battery in your car. You never have all the gas you want to. There's another fuel you need. You need that electricity. The word of God is your fuel. You don't have the word of God and you're in the spirit. Your thoughts that you think you're in the spirit are not God's thoughts. You're not in his word. You're not in his spirit. All right. That was good on that. I believe it. I said it myself. I might be wrong. Verse 92. Unless your law had been my delight. This is the beautiful thing right here. Unless. If this had not been. The word here is lule. Lule. So you have the ox gold and you have the wa, which is connected, you know, what you use to connect. Then you have the gold. Unless I am, unless you guide me to be attached to your guidance, I'll be destroyed. See, you got an ox gold. You got something like a nail. That's what that is. Then you got the ox gold again. Guiding, teaching, nail to guiding and teaching. Unless you guide me and affix me to your teaching. Unless this had happened, if it hadn't been my delight to be guided by you, to be guided by you and affixed to that, I would have perished in my affliction. You get that? Who's had affliction before? Who's been mistreated before? Who had been misled in false religions before? If it hadn't been for the sweet word of God. And he said, that's my delight. Do you delight in his word yet? Do your delight. The Bible says, delight yourself also in the Lord. And what will he do? Why do we not delight ourselves in him? I mean, we can do the church thing. Now, I'm going to have Ann, well, not Ann, but I'm going to have Drita go to Proverbs 8. We're winding down. Proverbs 8, verse 30. I want us to taste what it is to delight in his word. Do, do you know what is the, the delight in his word? You used to delight in pizza, Josiah, when you were young. You used to delight in pizza. Still does. And, and if, it's the, if it's the right kind, you know what I'm saying? Just, just the fact we're going to go get one, bring a smile to your face. See what I'm saying? Those that have been wicked, you know what it's like when you find something that you like to do that's wicked. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. You, there are some people that really enjoy fighting. I was growing up, going to East Hall High School, and I'd ask the guys, what you all do over the weekend? Man, we got to fight. We got drunk. We got to fight in the club. We had a good time. What? We got to fight. <laughs> Being black, that didn't fit. That didn't compute. Because growing up in Gainesville, somebody got shot at Maple Valley last week. Somebody got shot in the pine. Somebody got stabbed. <laughs> you know, you, you know, having fun fighting. I never, I never ever heard black people say that how they had fun fighting at the club because that's serious business for them. Oh, we got the fighting. And, well, it's, but that was their delight. What does it say in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 30? Read for Tim. Then I was by him as one brought up with him. This is wisdom talking, okay? This is wisdom talking about being with the Almighty God. Listen to her talk. And I was daily his delight. I was daily. God's delight. I was his delight. Is wisdom your delight yet? Or is folly? Is this word television, sports? There are men that can quote sports statistics better than I can quote the Bible. Oh, oh no, no, Muhammad Ali, that was 1967, and so and so and so and so, and so, and so, and so, and I was there. That was such and such and such and such. Barry Barnes did this on such and such a day. This is such and such, a, and they can tell. And his bat, and his batting percentage was one day when you don't have anything to do but just to check out something. I say find something to say sports radio and listen to the men talk. Go ahead, Dre. Let's get back to the word of God, which is so much more pretty. Amen. Then I was by him as one brought up with him. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth. And my rejoicing in the place 
where man live, that's what the habitual or habitual. In other words, in the place that's habited. Habited, okay? It don't, I, I know it's not going to go to abba, 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 abba. I'm not. In the place that's habitable. That's what that's talking about. Read, Dre. And my delights were with the sons of men. And my delights. Did you hear wisdom say? My delights is with the sons of men. If you learn wisdom, if you, that, and this is what this writer said, unless your law had been my delight. In other words, what you're beginning to see is through God's Torah, through his precept that's established in heaven, once it becomes your delight, you begin to start receiving wisdom of God. Woo! You, how you think I got to be as wise as I am? Because you can find areas where I'm not as wise as I should be. That's not wise. But in the areas that I'm wise, it came from the Bible. Somebody say, I thought you had a good mom and she taught you. Where did she get it? It didn't just come out of the top of your head. She ain't that brilliant. Or oh, your mama. See, that wasn't an insult. That's a compliment to the Most High God who told her mama, who told my mom and told me. Read some more, Dre. Now, therefore, hearken unto me, O you children. For blessed are they that keep my way. Blessed are they that keep my way. Is that 35th verse? Yes. For whoso finds me, finds life. Whoso finds me. There's two times I can remember when God said this. Say it, read it again. For whoso finds me, finds life, and shall obtain favor of Yahweh. There's two times I see that in the Bible. First time I remember seeing it, well, whoso finds a wife, finds a good thing, and obtains favor from the Lord. Now wisdom, she said, whoso finds me, finds life, and obtains favor from the Lord. That means you should not be wearing a dumb woman. How can you marry a woman and obtain favor from the Lord? But you got to get wisdom to get favor from the Lord. You're going to be trying to counsel yourself out. Marry a wise woman and get you a double dose of favor from the Lord. Because Genesis 2 and 18 says, It's not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable unto him. And it's not going to be a man. It's not going to be a beast. Because men do have sex with animals. Don't act like I'm stupid when I tell you I know what I'm talking about. Read the next verse just for, just for emphasis. Put a little extra gravy on it. But he that sins against me wrongs his own soul. All they that hate me love death. You don't know God's word? You don't love the wisdom of the word? It's not your delight? You love death. You've sinned against your own soul. While you're still being spiritual, while you're still going to church, and what you want somebody to do is to put their hand on your head, and you want to cry while they cry while they're, oh, praise the Lord, help the Lord, praise the Lord, oh, and you fall on the floor, and you get up, and you're still a thief. You get up, and you still don't love his word. You get up, and his word is not going in you, bringing forth the bud that can bring forth growth. And his word is not going to turn to him void. It's still going to accomplish. But his word, instead of building you up and making you productive, is adding up wrath against you, against the day of wrath, and you're being damned. Don't play with his word. You want to be led by the spirit. Go by his precious and his lovely word. So he said, in the last story have been my delight of perish in my affliction. Because your word, your Torah was my delight. I could take, I could take my widowhood. I could take my conditions. I could take the things that have come against me. I could take knowing what has happened to my ancestors. Because I know his word. Because I know that one day God will judge. Because I know his word is settled in heaven. Because I know he is faithful. Because I know that he's righteous. I know. And I don't have to give in or give down. His word is my delight. I don't have to go get drunk. I don't have to go on a shooting spree. I don't have to go learn how to bomb places. I don't have to go and mistreat somebody, kick somebody's dog, or shoot their cat. I know his word. And now, 
Now that we have talked about his arm and what he's done with his words settling it, listen to what the writer said he's going to do. Verse 93, I will never, 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 that's the word right there. That word never, that's, that's the word that gives us the word picture. He said, I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou have quickened me. The word there is you got the ox gold, and then, I mean, you have the sheep gold or the gold for the ox, either one, and then you have the olive, which is the ox head. So you got the chief, you got the instruction from the chief. You got the instruction from the chief that's full of power. And he says, I will never forget thy precepts. I'm not going to ask anybody here to raise your hand up if you've ever fornicated or adulterated. I'll just let my hand go. I'm not with Ann, but I've been a fool. You ever lied? You backbited? You ever done any other things as wicked as damnable to put you in hell? Him. I can't put it down. The tr truthful, let me put it down. But have you ever been chastened? Have you ever been beaten? Have you ever been whipped? Did God ever break your stony heart and make you humble yourself? And did he give you his righteousness? Yes! 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 Do I want to go back to that? No! So he said, but how do you get to that if you know you were trained not to be like that? Somewhere along the line, I forgot. Somewhere along the line, I forgot his word was settled. Somewhere I forgot that he's faithful. Somewhere I forgot that he's going to judge me. Somewhere I forgot that I got relatives in the grave. I'm talking about me. I know I got relatives in the grave that already in hell because you go to hell now. The Bible says he reserves the wicked to be punished. In other words, they are ready to be punished until the day of judgment. I have friends or associates that I know that according to God's word have already gone there. And I know had he chosen to take me out of this earth, I'd have been there because I know enough about his word. I don't care about somebody thinking I'm good. I don't care about if everybody I treat good, I know what kind of dirt I had on the inside. And it was filthy and nasty. So he says, I will never forget your precepts, for with them you have quickened me. Dree, if you will, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11. I want you to see the power of not forgetting his word. You see, there are people right now that say the Holy Spirit to teach me, and they forget God's word. They forget God's word means something. You can't be led by the Spirit of God like that to be productive for him without his word. You can't do it. There are people that were led by the Spirit of God out of the wilderness with Moses, right? The Spirit of God was in Moses, right? Right. And they came out of the wilderness with Moses, right? Right. But they didn't have God's word in them, right? Right. And they died in the wilderness. <laughs> no. Don't play with me. And about the Spirit of God lead you. You better have his word to show you what to do. Get your mind and wash you with the water of the word. Don't play with the word of God. Read it there. Deuteronomy. Read it. 8 verse 11. Deuteronomy 8 verse 11. Word of God. Beware that thou forget not Yahweh thy God. Moses saying to these people that have seen their parents dead. You got any parents any family member that you know that you aren't sure about that you think what the hell do you? You think everybody in your family have lived righteous before God did die. Wow. What an amazing family you must come from. Children of Israel can even claim that, that all of their family did. But it, Moses is telling them, you know how he operates. You know how he doesn't play. So Moses is saying, beware, lest you forget. Read, Dre, it's so pretty. Beware that thou forget not Yahweh thy God. In not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this text. Don't forget your text. 119.93, I will never forget thy precept. Moses is teaching them, don't forget. Don't forget. Look at me today. Please, all of you look at me. Everybody. Don't forget God's precept. Don't walk out of here today and forget God's precept. Don't walk out of here today and forget what God's word has said about our lives. Forgetting sometimes is just putting it aside because I'm going to do something else right now. It don't mean you have intellectually forgotten all the time. You said, right now it's not important. I got something I want to do. Don't do it. Read, Drake. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and have built goodly houses and dwell therein, 
And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied. In other words, when you got a big fat job and a big fat check, you got an income tax check, you got a raise, something happened, you might have won the lottery, something happened, somebody might have gave you something, they died, left you something. Something happened. You, in, in other words, when things are going good, when you're not in a tight and you're not in a squeeze, you think on Sunday you forget about God when you're in the squeeze. Moses is saying, oh, there's danger when everything going your way. I'm about to retire now. Oh, and I got me a little part-time gig too, and my house is paid for and everything. Don't forget it. Now read what he says in verse 14, the scary part. Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget Yahweh thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with map. Don't forget what he's done for you. Amen. Taking you something there because you got a dollar. Because you got $50,000 in your bank account. I work for people that spend that much sometime a day. I think I did some work for somebody the other night that may have spent $5 million on his building. And he don't love God. But I do. You ain't going to control Tim Merritt. Read tree. In the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee. He took you and he humbled you so that he could prove you. He wanted to show that you would still believe his word was settled and that he's still God and all things consist by him no matter what's going on. Now he's going to try you with blessing. Don't forget and read, mm -hmm. read. To do thee good at thine latter end. And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of my hand has gotten me this wealth. So you forget, you forget God when you get arrogant. You get pretty. Somebody tell you you're cute. Somebody, you, somebody tell you the clothes you about look good. Uh, you, you got your pretty little girlfriend, a pretty little boyfriend. Or you got your nice little job, whatever it is you feel good about. Somebody calling you pastor now. Somebody calling you bishop. Somebody calling you reverend. Somebody calling you deacon. You feel good about yourself, right? Mm -hmm. you got your, they gave you a position on the job and didn't give you a raise. You feel good about yourself. Or you got a title administrator. And all they did was gave you that because they know you're stupid and they don't, and you're not going to give you no money. Am I right, Dre? Can't that happen in real life? Read. But thou shalt remember Yahweh thy God. For it is he that gives the power to get wealth, yeah. that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy father. His covenant is in his words. You want to be led by the Spirit? Don't forget him in the good times, nor the bad. Read on for time's sake. As it is this day, and it shall be, if thou do at all forget Yahweh. This is why the man said, I don't forget. It ain't just because I forgot God. Moses has given a warning. And the warning that Moses has given is the same warning that you're going to get in Hebrews chapter 10. If the thing happened under Moses' law, how much S-O-R-E-R, sorrow punishment, do you think that individual is worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God and that like it was nothing and did so according to the spirit of grace because they teach you to do stuff like that according to the spirit of grace in this ungodly, ungodly, ungodly world. Yes. Read, read. And it shall be if thou do it all forget Yahweh thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them. You follow money, you follow what they call secularism, because they tell you secularism, you don't think it's religion. But it is religion. You don't let people give you a term. You don't let somebody cut a man's genitals off and tell you he's a girl. You don't let somebody come and slap you in the face and tell you that they love you. You don't quit being stupid. God is a God of knowledge with him actions the way. You need to be like your father, learn the way actions. Ah, see how stupid we're going to be. And so he said, you go worship other gods and other religions. 
This is what he's talking about. In other words, you start taking somebody else's words over his words that settle in heaven. That's what serving other religions, that's what following the teachings of demons is all about. You want folk to like you. You want folk in your family to like you. Your family don't help. When you die, your family not going to help you. We're going to look at your grave. We're going to look at your casket. We might rub your face. We might feel sad. But I ain't jumping in there. You was out there with me when my dad was put in the ground. Did I jump in? You to push me and I tried to fight you. So what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't scared. I didn't want to go down that low. <laughs> all right, now that I gave you all a middle break, read, read. I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. He tested. This is God's word, saints. This is what's settled in heaven. Read what Moses said will happen if you forget. I testify what? I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. How? As the nations which Yahweh destroys before your face, so shall you perish. Because you would not be obedient to the voice of Yahweh your God. Now I want you to understand what Moses just said. In brief, what Moses just said, forgetting God has become arrogant. To throw him aside, and then he gave you the capstone in case you didn't grasp it. Forgetting God is not being obedient. Look at that last clause. He says, You would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. This man is saying, I will never, ever, 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 ever forget your precept, your picadine. I will not forget the very thing in your law that I'm supposed to look to to do. I, I'm being led by the Spirit to continue to look at it. I will never stop being obedient to your word. For through them, you've quickened me. Moses already gave the quickening part. He gave the manna. He took you out of the wilderness. He took you out of Egypt. Don't forget. Don't think it's your might and your power. Are you enjoying this? Yes. I was going to read for you all Romans chapter 1. Uh, verse 28 through 32. Three, if you can read that in about one minute, it'll make me happy. Yeah, Romans 1, 28. Let me tell you what it's about. The three don't even have to read it because I'm, I'm trying to cut time because I want to have Pastor Griff here in a minute. The Bible says when men did not like to retain God in their knowledge, that means they forgot. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which were not convenient. This is when they start murdering. This is when they start killing. This is when they worship other gods. This is when homosexuality came into play. This is where slander and all these things. It's when men knew God as God. They glorified him not as God. That means they forgot. They pushed him aside and became vain in their imagination. So let's say when America glorified God not as God and America became vain in its imagination. America enslaved black people, treated them like dogs, hung them from trees. I've seen plenty of pictures. I even went to a black museum, gone to the one in Alabama yet, but I'm, I plan to go. America did things to white people as well. America did things to the people that they call Indians. But look at what we're doing right now. We have done things to our black children and we don't want to get it right. But God's watching. We're doing things to babies in the womb. America has promised those people that came up during the Roosevelt time, you pay this money in and we're going to do certain things with Social Security. You took their money. You took their money because Texas does the exact same thing. And those people's money was invested. And those people have, I think, 10 times more than people on Social Security. And you're always taking the money from people, doing something that's buying votes. God's watching. So America glorifies God, not as God. They become vain in their imagination, and our hearts are darkened. We go in and bomb people. We go in and take stuff from countries. We go in and we want to redefine marriage. We want to redefine what education is. We want to redefine what life is, and we think we're smart. But I can tell you this much. We've forgotten God. And the Bible said, the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that what? Okay, that means the wicked individuals and nations which are made of individuals. Thank you, Dre, for letting me quote that. The 94th verse, I am thine, save me. 
The word dying here is where we get that lament again. He said, I am dying, save me. Do you know that's like a child saying, I'm yours, daddy. Save me. He says, for I have sought thy precepts. Now that's a powerful thing. I'm yours. Save me because I've kept your precepts. It's very important to understand because if you don't understand what that means, that I've caught your precepts and that puts me in the position to have you to save me. I know people tell you there's nothing you can do. No. In other words, I am led by you. It's the Lamed. That's all it is. It's the Lamed. The word led. The Lamed. I'm led by you. That's what it means to be I am thine. The way this, this word picture. I'm led by you. I don't forget your precepts. Save me. I keep your precepts. You all like that? I like it. If you don't like it, I do. Let's look at let's look at a beautiful scripture because I want you to I want you to grasp this from the from the writer's point of view in a way that you can hold on to it. You know the Bible teaches us that Abraham obeyed God. He belonged to God. When Pharaoh messed up, what happened? Didn't God his house? A lot of times I did. What about Sarah's sake? Do y'all think Sarah's not important? I know a lot of times we emphasize it. Yeah, I'm going to go to uh, Psalms 4 and 3, and I'm going to show you something. Something that's beautiful. Dre I'm not going to go till we got Dree. Dree read Psalms 4 and 3. Well, I'm taking over your part. She'll get, she'll get down in, she'll get down in a minute. And then when she get there, it's going to taste just as good as she was there when I first said it. So I know that Yahweh has set apart him that is godly for himself. See, Yahweh, and go to uh, Hebrews 11 and 6 while I'm talking. Yahweh has set apart him that is godly for himself. Did you grasp it? I am yours. I am, see the word picture? I've been led by your arts goat. I've been controlled by your arts goat. I have set apart him that is being led by me that is godly for myself. You don't want to be led by my arts goat. I just beat the mess out of you till I destroy you forever. As the wicked shall be turned into hell. All those other nations that would not turn, they, weren't they destroyed? I know what the Bible says. Hebrews 11 and 6 says what? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek. Go to John 8, 31. I want you to, I want you to see something about those that are here. But listen, he says in Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith it's impossible to please him. For him to come, he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Tim, why did you just read that? Because I'm going to tell you that that's what Noah did. Noah was his, he saved him. Abraham was his, he saved him. Isaac was his, and they saved him. Because you don't know that they wanted to get rid of Isaac when they killed him in those wells. Every time Isaac was getting that well, they wanted to take those wells from Isaac. If you don't know the Bible, you don't know what I'm talking about. You, but then, let's go on down. You see, they wanted to kill Moses, but Moses belonged to God. And Moses gave up all the wealth of Egypt for the Most High, and they wanted to kill him. And he was a vagabond. Well, not a vagabond. He was a, a fugitive for 40 years. Then they were son of Sonder. They were in sheep skin, goat skins, and dens and caves of the earth. Why? They were belong to him. They were following his ox goat. This writer is in good company when he says, save me because I am yours. Are you his? When your bills are due, are you his? When you're hurting, are you his? When they lie against you, are you his? When your family members die, are you his? Save me. Feed me through your word to know what to do. Give me that sweet, sweet wisdom. John 8, 31. I know what it said, but I want Dree to read it. Then said Jesus, those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word. If you continue in my spirit. Did it say in my spirit? If you continue in my word. Did it say if you continue in yourself prophesying or speaking in tongues? If you continue in my word. Did it say if you continue coming to church and singing and jumping up and down and acting like you like you don't act during the week? If you continue in my word. 
Uh huh. Then are you my disciples sent you? Then you're mine. And what about it? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Did you get it? This man says, I am dying, save me. How do you know you're, you're in his word? You're in his word. You're in his word. You're in his word. You're in his spirit. You're in his protection. You're in his covenant. You're in the, guess what? John 17, 21 says, you will be in the Father. The Father will be in you. The Son will be in you. And you'll be one as the Father is in Christ. And as Christ is in the Father, you'll be one. You will not be God. The Son will not be the Father. The Father will not be the Son. And you will not be the Son. And you will not be the Father. But you'll be one because you are all working together for the one thing that God has. His spirit is in you. Blessed the blessed name that's between the cherubim. And he says, Save me because I have kept your precepts. The precepts, his word, is what you continue in. He says, The wicked has waited for me to destroy me. The word for. That's the, that's the word right here that has that word picture in it. It says, the wicked is waiting for me to destroy me, but I will consider thy testimony. The wicked want to destroy me. They want to get rid of me. But guess what? It says, they have waited for me. They want to go and they want to leave me. You still got that same picture. But the wicked want to do it. They want to lead. Listen to me. When you follow the culture, when you follow your own mind when it's wicked, right. when you follow false religions, they want to be your ox goal. Right. They want to lead you to destroy you, to thrust you away from Yah. It says the wicked have waited. They planned. Mm -hmm. My wife had a tendency to say, she, she liked that script in the psalm. She tell them what that script is when they lay up in their bed plotting that you get them for me. They they sit up on their bed plotting. How do you think they determine how to beat you get beat you out of your money? That's they right. do things with Bitcoin, and I mean sometimes you do well, sometimes you don't. How do you think they can just trade stock and trade paper? Why do you think we have paper in our pocket that's not backed up by gold or silver? They plotted. Why do you think you have to do a whole lot of things, sign and give them money to do certain things? Why do you think that they can determine we're gonna put these inject this stuff inside of you? They plot. The wicked have waited for me to destroy, but I have kept your testimony. What do you mean I kept your testimony? What is the witness in his word? Do you keep it? Now, I was going to have her to read a scripture, but I'm not going to read it. Matthew 4 and 4. Satan was trying to plot to destroy the Lord Jesus. And he says, I'll give you all these kingdoms. And he said, I'll tell you what. I'm, I can promote you. Turn these stones into bread. But what did he say? The testimony, the testimony of Deuteronomy chapter 8 and 3 was this. Man shall not live by what? But by what? That what? So why can't we be like that? I'm in the spirit, but I can still do stuff. Solomon was in the spirit. Solomon was in the spirit. Solomon still loved worship so much so he would build all those houses of worship. Don't tell me you're building up all these houses of worship and you're not doing it too. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that caused Israel to sin, he worshiped, set up a golden calf in Bethel and Dan and changed the feast days and they worshiped. Children of Israel, the 18th chapter of 1 Kings, worshiping. They don't even know who the real Yahweh is anymore. Halt between two doggone opinions. That's how we live when we walk outside of God's will. We halt between two opinions. Am I going to do right by this person? Am I going to do right? Am I going to Am I going to look at my needs and what I want and don't care what this person has? But God's going to judge you and you're going to reap what you sow. God's going to bust your stinking tail. He's going to bust our government, our government plunders, our government take from other nations. He's going to get it. And some of us take from people. We go out there and we call ourselves doing service work and we beat people out of their money. God is watching. Preachers beat people out of their money. You ain't giving them nothing for their time. You come sit up and hear me. People say, you give them too much to them. Well, I tell you this. That everything they give me, every book I want to buy, everything I want to study, if I need a computer, they'll pay. They, you all pay for it. And I'm not going to give you something. I'll give you more than you can handle and you go and listen to it again. We only got so much time per week. 
think I give you all of this and think you're going to digest it and get it all in one time? No. Why we have it on? We have it on podcast, YouTube, Facebook. And you come ask me, I'll tell you some more to your face. <laughs> the last verse says, I have seen the end of all perfection, but thy commandment is broad or exceeding broad. Again, you have that out gold. I have seen the end of all of the completion of things. I've seen how people live. I've seen how people walk. I've seen what happened to the wicked. I see how the earth does. I've seen. I've seen the end of all perfection. We're not talking about being perfect. We're talking about here being complete. I've seen the end of the narrowness of things. The end. He said, but your commandment it's not like an end. It's very broad. Very broad. Life is in it. Health is in it. Blessing is in it. Strength is in it. It can cause you to grow. It can cause you to be. It can cause you to do. It can cause you to be able to walk in the spirit. Do you love his word? So do you want to be led by the spirit? Get in his word. Honor his word. Understand it's settled in heaven. Understand that's where your strength is. Understand that you, if you forget it, you're going to miss out on all of that. And the end of your folly, the end of your fornication, the end of your dope smoking. And I didn't say you go to hell for smoking dope. I know people get mad if I say that, but Jesus said there's nothing that go inside a man to defile him. Now, do you like what he said or not? He said there's nothing that go inside a man to defile him. It's what you do after you do it. Oh, some of you all do some things. Some of you all do it so you can forget God's law and throw it aside. But I'm going to tell you something. I know people have prohibition against you having a drink or drinking wine. You can't prove that in the Bible, so I'm not going to teach it. That's right. But be a drunkard here. Be a drunkard. Come on. And you're wicked. And you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Who gets to determine when you're drunk? Yahweh. But you're going to tell me that Jesus didn't drink any? You're a damnable lie. They called him a wine bibber. And there's some of you all that don't want to drink what John the Baptist didn't drink. Okay, so we got both sides. John didn't eat or drink with you. That's an idiom for drinking, you know, when you all do stuff. But Jesus said, son of man, because I can do it. I can take a drink. And I can still tell you my father's house awesome in many I can still get down and wash your feet. I can still say, if I don't wash you, you have no part. I don't let something take over control of me because I don't forget his word. Because I made that. I can take this right here and I can make it wine and give it to you and judge you if you get drunk. Yeah. I made your genital for you to have sex and enjoy it. So I don't think if men enjoyed it, a lot of times we would have less children in the world. <laughs> if there was a little button back on the back of a man, on the back of a man's ear before he engaged in courtiers, you are, I can use the Greek word there. He it flicked that switch where you couldn't get pregnant, it'd be less children. There are certain things that go on in this world, and because of the fact that people find enjoyment, that's a lot of babies been born. People say it was an accident. I didn't plan to do that. But see, the activity was planned. Or the activity, you might not have planned it, but I guarantee you, he probably did. Or you might have planned it, but she did, because it's like, you got a good job. <laughs> You're going to be a professional basketball player, football. You think you're just friends. But we're planning. We're planning. You going to get that fat contract? There's a, there's a young guy right there you all don't know about. I'm at the end of my message. His name is Zion Williamson. He was playing basketball. I don't even, I've never seen him play, but I see the news. Nike, he was wearing a pair of Nike shoes, and they tore up and almost messed his knee up for good. I don't know how. I believe he's going to get paid to the full. And, and the guy plays basketball, and he can just power over people, and he's 18. Well, his check would be huge. You don't think there's somebody that would not plot? 
And if I could get a hold of him, because is the child support based a, a, a little bit on how much you earn? See, we, so these are the kind of things that we see. But the Bible says, I have seen the end of all perfection. I've seen the end of these things. But it says, your commandment is very broad. Stick with what's broad. Don't stick with the things that's going to come to the end. And with that, I want to pray. And we're going to have a little discussion. And Pastor Gray can come back. We'll have him to come up here. If not, then Gary going to have to come up here. Father, I thank you for your blessed word. I thank you for your righteousness and your goodness. I thank you because you said your word is settled and I can trust it. I can lean on it. Help us to grow. Help us to be who you would have us to be. Strengthen us with might in the inner man to the glory of the praise of your goodness. Amen. Amen. And even so, amen. Pastor Gray, come up here and take the hot seat, please. You get this Bible, y'all. <laughs> very good, very good. Uh, I'd like to have your thoughts on. And would you like to stop it here and start over? We're just gonna let it run like this. Okay. What, 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 what's some of your thoughts on that? Do you disagree with anything we talked today? I do not disagree, but I do concur with everything you said. With that which I heard. Concur is the biggest little short word that I think I know. <laughs> I'm in total agreement, and as you expounded, I have been looking, studying in the book of Titus, okay, uh, chapter two, chapter one, and, and it goes right along with what you're saying. Well, tell, give us a little taste. Because in the book of Titus, chapter two, it teaches about the older men mm. teaching the younger men, the older women teaching the younger women how to be godly, how to honor God by his word. That goes right along with what you're talking about. And how not to forget God's word. And that is an awesome thing. And I would ask, I was tearing it up back then. I said, a few more, I might get into my emotions, start running. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hadn't seen anybody do that in a long time. Uh, that was, that's how good it was. And you Especially when you went over into Deuteronomy, Moses telling the people, do not forget me. Once you have your own houses and you're satisfied, don't let your heart get so fat and you forget God. You know, uh, Moses being the elder man, in essence, teaching the younger men. Mm -hmm. And that the older men in that era who erred against God, all died because they forgot. And God said, even to Moses, I feel me another generation. Maybe another generation that'll worship me in spirit and in truth. And that's what he did. We're part of that. <laughs> I, I like By that. the word. By the word. Any of this anything that you had thought about that you and I would needed to discuss. And then I'm good for putting Monkey wrench and something. But well, it's I mean, the first time I came through my monkey wrench. Well, well, it might not even have to be about this, you know, because we got issues in yeah. this city. <laughs> and we got we got people right now doing so much. For instance, um, I was talking to a young lady the other day. And she told me that more women that are black come to where she works. So I mm -hmm. won't name the name of the place because right. it will disclose who she right. is. That have had that are black that have had problems with complications of abortion. Yeah. And see, we don't get to hear that. Yeah. We don't get to hear, but we get to hear the lie that's taught by the wicked one right. that cause people to forget the yeah. truth that you should yeah. not kill or you should not murder. Right. And so these women are being prompted to have abortions and they have so many complications. And if there's possible, if I can get her. I will probably give her a disguise yeah. where nobody would know who right. she is right. and we'll discuss it one day like right. this. Of course, I know of a case where a young lady going through complications of having an abortion, not only physical, mental, and emotional, how it affects them. That's not being told. 
in public life, you know. So there's a great deal that goes on with it, but then at the same time, it goes right back to the word of God. Had that young lady been taught by that mature godly woman, yes, would have made all the difference in the world. Would have made all the difference in the world. Or that young man that sowing seed and chosen by so many different women. Had he not been, had he been taught by the godly mature man, wouldn't have been sowing seeds and getting in trouble. All the stuff we see it even in Gainesville, even in this community. Young men and young women look like they are just out in the woods and they lost their way. And, it's, and the part that upsets me, frustrates me, is that all of them are part of church. Lord Jesus. Every denomination you can think of, they're part of. My path so and so, my path so and so. And I'm like, I don't want to hear that. When I go places, I, I often tell people, don't no, say nothing about me being a pastor. Because it's almost like a shame. It is a shame. It, it, it shouldn't, it should because have to be. They're serious. supposed to be teaching and being examples. Yeah. Names, I can't, I can't remember names. Now everybody knew that. I don't want to give you a name. Dre, Dre, Dre. It's Adrian, and that's where the Dre come from. Give me <laughs> Titus chapter two, please. See, you you ain't off the hook. <laughs> Glory <laughs> to God. <laughs> I thought my wife was coming in, but she out there needs to look up. If you'll start reading Titus chapter two, first person or the first six he talked to. Listen to who he talked to first. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise. Stop right there. And just stop right there. Who did he talk to first? He talked to the men, the mature men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're to be sober. We're to have temperance. We're to be godly like. And what has happened is we failed. We did exactly what you said in your message. We did our own thing. It's really, really sad. It is me. sad. I sat and watched young adults, boys, girls, and I was almost in tears. And it wasn't so much that the fact that what got me was my black boys and girls. My black boys and girls. What did they do? It, I can't even describe. I don't want to describe. It's that bad. It's that bad. And it just hurts me. So I pray hard for the young men and women of this church. I said, God, don't let them be like the mother folk. May they have respect. May they have good morals. But most of all, may they love you more than anything. Yes. Anything. Because that's the only thing that's going to make a difference. Do you find do you find that their parents are the same or are their parents leading them in the truth? I go off the facts of the word of God, the bloodline. When I see young men, even in my congregation, I look at the daddies. Mm. Oh. Still carrying on the trend. Daddy was a player, so I'm gonna be a player. Daddy was a drunkard, so I'm gonna be a drunkard. How do you cut that? You gotta get in the word of God. Yeah. Matter of fact, just last night, a young man called me from jail, about to lose his mind. I don't think I told him I said, get in the word of God. For real. All the prayer in the world, I can pray, it ain't gonna do you no good until you get in the word of God and you find God right. Right there in the word. I said, when you get that, and that's your deliverance, that's your healing, that's your salvation, is the word of God. What was his response? I will. I said, then I, I pray for you now. I said, but you, I can't do nothing for you. I want my mama. I want my brothers. I want folks to come see me. I said, they can come see you. You're still going to be in the same fix. Mm. You have to have the word of God. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a pathway unto our uh, God on child pathway. 
I said, that means you ain't got to worry no more. You got a problem, take it to him. Yeah. If you take it to him, that's the way it works. That, that's the way it is. But my heart bleeds for you. Yeah, not trying to make it a race, but because where we come from as a race of people yeah. and what we had to endure and what we are still enduring. Yeah. I look more out of my youth group than I do my old. And I see them messing up because they see the older messing up. And this plainly says the older men are supposed to be teaching, leading, kind of by examples. Yeah. Here, really, talking about some preachers, really, what he's saying here, preachers. Mm-hmm. Basically, what he's talking about. We got to be held accountable. Yeah. Got to be held accountable. Because in, in the Old way? Testament, God said, I'm going to judge them more harshly than anybody. Do you think that pastors are being judged? Pastors, bishops, apostles, no, I'm the untouchable. First thing they do is touch not the anointed one, do God. That means touch not, touch not. Touch not and do the prophet no harm. If you are anointed, it is because of the word of God that should be in you. We said it earlier. Let my word be in you. You in the word and the word in you. Amen. That's what, what counts. You know, I get this all the time. Um, how are you able to sustain out of all you went through? So I, I got to when you're talking about they when your wife talk about how they sit on the side of their bed. They, they, plot. Plot. They, they plot. They plot. I personally have had that. Day. They plotted. They came to 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 do what they had plotted, both black and white. Oh, they had a host. And I said, I'm tired. I'm going to do what I want to do. And the word of God spoke. You have no need to fight this battle. See that I. Don't open your mouth. But Lord, this battle's not yours. I sat as Brother Tim sitting there, and all these folks in front of me, even some of my staff members, oh, they went up me one side down the other. Tell me what they're going to do to me. And I just said that. It was just a couple because I had the peace of y'all in me. Hey, and uh, I said, the sweetest name yeah. I know. <laughs> And when they got through, I, they prayed. It was the most ridiculous prayer I've ever heard. That's all they did. They didn't even get to this. <laughs> <laughs> and I come out of there. I said, Lord, I sure want to this. It's not your battle. And on the outside, into the sanctuary, there was a group of folk waiting to speak. Mm. And when they spoke, and all of them that plotted, had to lie <laughs> and got caught in every lie. Wow. It sounds like the passage. <laughs> they talk about the wicked, what they want to do. Yeah. They want to lead you away yeah. from God's truth and make you forget God's truth. And that was the number one thing they were trying to do. They shut him up. Because mm. when you shut the man or woman of God up, you just by giving. How will a person know if you're a man of God or not? By the way you live, according to the word of God, not by what you say. But I've heard preachers, and my dad used to tell me, and I think I've heard James say it, that preachers used to say, don't do as I do. Do as I say do. Do as I say do. That they, that they would say That's that. That's tough. Now, instead of saying it, a lot of times, they just live. They just live. Many of the local pastors that I know of. When I got into their chambers, discussed, broke my heart. I'm thinking to myself, and these people just holler, amen, hallelujah. I said, well, look at them living like this behind closed doors. So I dissociated myself because the Bible says, what? Fellowship, the light with darkness. So I just fellowship. I speak and I go around, but I don't hang out with them. 
because darkness has, I mean, light has nothing to do with darkness. Right. And if I'm associating hate with them all the time, guess what? Corrupt communication. Yes. Well, but see, there's a thing that's called the carnal Christian. It's taught by Charles Stanley. It's taught by Bob George. It's taught by a lot of people. The list, I shouldn't say. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Fair flow. You can you can you I can mention the black people that say yeah. stuff wrong. Yeah, and Stanky over here. Yeah. Genesis, what a name? Genesis. Right. Right. They teach all of them. So my question is. You see my wife right there. So if I go and I commit adultery and I go be with this woman and I say, okay, I'm a pastor. I know the word of God. Mm -hmm. And let's say that I say I'm full of the spirit. And just right now, we just not, we're not, we're not, we're not compatible. What, what would, what would you, what would, what, if I tell you I'm still going to heaven, would, what would you tell me? I would Make the difference according to the word of God. And I probably say, I beg you not to beg the difference. Then what we got, what you tell me? I said we have to look into the word of God. And the word of God is the one that we're supposed to What if I tell you God said he forgive everything except for blasphemy against the Holy Ghost? And I would say, have you truly repent? There you go. Then I say I did, I, I went to your church, I get on the floor and I and told the Lord I was that I was sorry. <laughs> Cause what? what is this Cause this is what we hear. And we see it every Sunday. And and you and you see people say, "I I repented." And go uh, right back. Yes. What do you say to that person? You repented from what? I repented of my sins, but I'm weak. I'm weak, and you know the Bible say the spirit is willing, but, but the, the flesh, but the flesh is, weak. is weak. And then they're gonna quote Paul, "When I sought to do right, evil was present." But so what do, what do you tell that person? Because that person, they have a religion. That is their belief. What you do, what you adhere to, they feel like I'm safe with that. What do you, what do you say? Oh, yeah. I want to see Romans. Romans. Well, What's the third it sound chapter? Like? Third chapter of Romans. Okay. It was a long Shall time we time. continue in sin? That's six. Right. That's six and one. God forbid. Yeah, that's six right. and one. Yes. In other words, because you repent, that means that means you're supposed to turn away from yeah. mm -hmm. and not be as a dog that returns back to his boat. A dog. Do you feel that's kind of harsh for you to say that? Like well, a dog turns her to vomit. Well, I think it's harsh when God say, "I destroy you and your household. You don't get it right." <laughs> This is God now. But <laughs> Dr. Charles Stanley says, Charles Stanley, if you got a house full of sin, God TV got a house all the time. He got a house full of sin. God got a house full of grace. Am I correct? Oh, Steve. Your Joe. Love. 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 God so love you. He'll kill you too. God don't murder nobody. Have you not read your Bible? If you forget me, and do not return, I will allow you to perish mm -hmm. because you don't return. But, but but see, for Pastor, that's the Old Testament. That's, oh, I'm that's sorry. What, that's what I'm I, sorry. That's, I'm that's, sorry. That's, that's, that's what they told us on TV. I'm so now, now what do you say? when they Well, say? in the New Testament, yes. even the Lord says for men to let go of the plow and turn back, mm -hmm. you're not fit but for Pastor, the kingdom. But Pastor, I've heard preachers say, well, everything that Jesus said before he died on the cross was still Old Testament. And since he died on the cross, now that's not, that's not a fact for us today. All As right. a matter of fact, they say all of the Sermon of the Mount. Don't was count no more. Have you all heard? Anybody heard that before? Don't count no more. Yes. Well, the Bible says we have to go to follow after the example of Christ. He did. Yahshua, the yes. son of Yah, God. Now we're going to go out after his example. How then can we say what he said does not count no more? My pastor said who, who? I'm just saying this is, it, I, is, it, is it not that it's really what my pastor says versus what the Lord says? Now, my Bible teaches that 
Men cannot make one hair white or black. You can get Clairol, but you got to keep using Clairol. So, you got to keep using some, it, though. Somebody tried to tell me the other day if I saw him doing his hair, and he was and he was trying to get me to do mine. I said, no, nah, we'll, leave, we'll leave it white. And what I said, when it turns, it just turns. Because the Bible says, I think you said this Saturday before last, and there's a way that seems right unto me. Yes. But the end of it is destruction. Meaning that because we think we know the way, we can't even map out tomorrow. That's true. Except God will do it. Now, now take the same argument and we're going to flip it. I want to be on your side okay. and you throw me some of the arguments that you hear in Gale that the pastor say of what they think. Well, my pastor told me you can't judge me. Well, your pastor's a liar. <laughs> I, I, my pastor went to the theological school. He got a PhD degree. He got a doctorate. He's got a master and a pastor. According to the Bible, your pastor's a liar because the Bible said, no, you're not that the saints are going to judge the world. We can't judge small matters. We're not worthy to do that. As a matter of fact, Paul said he was ashamed that people couldn't judge. Uh, explicitly, now, your pastor, did your pastor die for your sins? Was your pastor hung on a tree? Because if he wasn't, now the one that was says in John 7, 24, judge not according to appearance, judge righteous judgment. And if we're the priesthood, wasn't it so that when you brought your animal up there to the priest, <laughs> that it was supposed to die in your place? And wasn't the priest, wasn't that the that priest supposed to examine it, look and see if it was fit? My pastor said we don't have to do that no more. All we got to do is get saved. I don't have to do nothing else. Does your what does your pastor mean when he gets saved? What I, what does that what does that mean? I pray. You pray. And accept Jesus. You, what does that and mean? And that that does. It. Now when you say I'm pray, saved always. Now when you say you saved, does that mean you saved in your sin or saved from your sin? According to Romans chapter six and twenty, being made free from sin, you become service to God. You have your fruit of the holiness. And the end everlasting life. But when he says you pray, are you saying that you tell God to do what you say when you petition him, but you don't have to do what he says? Is that what your pastor say? Your no, pa the Bible says, let God be true and let your pastor be. I mean, let every, <laughs> <laughs> let every man be a liar. My pastor, all I have to do is pray. Mm -hmm. And God wipes everything clean. I don't have to worry about it no more. Your pastor sound like the men in Jeremiah when Jeremiah told them they were going to destroy the temple. And they said the temple of God, the temple of God are these, and God will not destroy Jerusalem. And Jeremiah says, do you all remember Shiloh? Mm -hmm. Do you remember Ichabod? He didn't say Ichabod, but do you remember the Ark of the Covenant was gone? So you let your pastor be your author and finisher of your faith. That's right. <laughs> My pastor, he's a man of God. He's a good man. Which God? I believe one. he's a man of God. It's the same God, God. Of, of, of every church and every synagogue. That's scary because going to men when you know when going to when all men speak well of you, and there's no distinction. Well, the Bible says that that uh, he that finds good wife, so he has to be a good man. Well, when he says a wife and a man, it's just like your pastor is saying, or you saying that a man can be a wife. Is that, is that, is that what your pastor is? I don't think I like your, what's your pastor's name? I want to protect his identity. It's kind of like Dragnet. Have you ever ran across somebody here to say there's no truth? How do you deal with that kind of person? What do you tell them? I don't know. I just think in the Bible, I said, now, between you and God, well, you're separate. I said, but there is truth. And there's only one truth. Who is it? His name is Jesus. So if Jesus or Yeshua, if there's no truth, then there's no him. There's no him. And if there's no him, I live it as in vain. Well, throw that line after me. Tell me it's no truth. There's no truth. 
Do you mean what you just said? That's no truth. Is that statement you made the truth? Or are you lying to me to my face? Solomon, uh, Solomon says vanity, vanity. I'm not talking about Solomon. I'm talking about you. You said there's no truth. That's no truth. So are you lying to me now? Or are you telling me the truth? That is no truth. So if there's no truth, are you lying to me? <laughs> or are you telling me the truth? I'm telling you the truth. So truth? you say that there's no truth and you're telling me the truth. That uh -huh. means you're lying. So why should I believe a liar? Because there's no truth. <laughs> and, that's, and that's the thing. If there is no truth, the statement you made means no sense, nothing to me. Because if there is no truth, that statement is not true, and therefore you're not the person that I should be listening to. That's right. That's right. And and this is some of the things that young people need to know, because this is what they tell you in school. There is no truth, but they're going to tell you that as if it is the truth. Guys, I met a normal young man. We had group discussion. Uh, this was Thursday. He said the Quran. And I said, so you believe in Muhammad? You can't hear me? Come up, come to I said, you, you don't believe in Muhammad? Okay. He won't I said, speak call. up. Next, I said, he next said, time, yeah, we just friends, just say it, okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay. He says, yeah, because uh, they say it. I said, no, I read the book. I said, in the book of Shuras, page 84, 86. I said, y'all said that Allah is God. I said, I understand the meaning of the word miracle. I said, but in the book of Shuras, it quotes and unquotes. And Allah was sent. Moses was sent. And even Jesus was sent. I said, now, if Allah is God in your religion, who sent him? I can't say it. The Bible in which I read, did nobody send God nowhere. He went, signifying and showing his authority of who he is. Mm. I said, so if who you pray and, and follow after is who he said, who said it? You got to tell me who said it. I said, I don't ask the question a million times and nobody gave me the answer yet. Who sent Allah? The best thing that they should do is lie. And I'm not going <laughs> to do I mean, cause that, cause but that's that, in that whole book. That, yeah, because that's the key they can do to Kia, and he can say that's just an illusion for the ignorant people to believe that he was sick. I'm just that that's how they lie. Am I right, Andrina? But I had a man yesterday, and we talked about Islam, and I said, Sir, you're a black man. How are you gonna talk to me about the Quran of Allah? I said, Do you do you not know that the Muslims yeah. with the Portuguese? And the Spaniards and the Catholic Church under King John II took black men and they put them on ships and shipped them over to the, to the Caribbean and to the United States to make slaves out of us and cut our pieces off and make us be in there with their harem. And they made slaves and they still doing it in Libya. And you want to tell me I should follow the Quran? I ain't going to mention the Buddha? I mentioned that to him. And he what? Said, I didn't know that. I said, but because you ain't studying, right? I said, you didn't know that? I said, I don't even study y'all still, but I know it because it's history. It is. I said, and look at history. Look at about your people. Our kids, 13, 14, 12, being indoctrinated, they go to uh, Christian private academies. You know, Jesus was white. I said, who told you that? Where did he get that from? Well, in our Bible, it don't say he was black. I said, but do you know the description of him? He looked just like you because you got nappy hair, you got big lips. I said, you were born in Africa. I wasn't, but you were. So he looked more like you than he do me. I said, you going to sit there and tell me? I said, who told you that? What did you say in the school? I said, it's all white school, isn't it? I said, I'm not against white people. I said, but the truth doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter now because we have to worship in spirit and truth. I said, now there's another lie. We do have to worship in spirit and truth, but it does matter because it's the truth. That's right. It's the truth. And the thing, and the thing is, is that the people that you use and you say that represent the Hebrew people, right. they say that they got it from the mother's bloodline. That's a biblical impossibility. That's right. That's a biblical impossibility. The only for impossible. you to say that you are that you are there. And then the start, if we start talking about the people that were left there after they had the dispersion under Titus, uh, the Edomites and the things like that, and how they got together, and you start having the people going to German. Why do you think we call Yahweh Jehovah 
or we call Jesus Jesus. Why do you think that? What do you think? That's the German influence over the translation. Right. The, now, I didn't say over the manuscript. I said over the translation. That's the German influence. Do you own Killing the List commentary, Rich? Rich. Okay, if you got Killing the List, they use the word Jave, J A V E for Yahweh. Because that's the German influence. If you see any of those times when you see those J's, that's the German because that's the way they made the Y sound. And so you see a lot of like I own Gerhard Kittel, this big massive set of Greek stuff. I own a lot. It's a German influence. And even the Hebrew, when you hear me say Bob, you right. say Bob, hey, or Yahweh, that's the German influence because a W is a double V. A double B, and so when you get when you start looking at your commentaries and things like that, they have the Bob. When you look at the modern Hebrew, it'll have a V, and so instead of Wah, instead of Yahweh, you say Yahweh, and then yeah, I have to break myself from that because what happened is they use that to make the people in Israel feel more superior than those of us over here That's and they right. go sit up in our neighborhoods right. and do things that send porn throughout the world. Right. They use Chuck Lorre to do the Big Bang Theory to promote That's that, right. to prevent wickedness. They use Chuck Lorre to do all these different kind of shows, the sitcom Jerry Seinfeld supposed to be supposed to be, and they make that being married is wicked, it's ungodly, right. run around, be whorish, and the exactly. movies that are made are you and you just look and see the rap entertainment, Weinstein, Bernstein. Look and see who are doing the things. Right. And you're gonna tell me this is my Jesus? Well, he can you can keep Jesus and give me Yeshua. And they are Jewish. The, the only reason that I will say Jesus is because I know that's how we communicate, and that's what we know. But there's a reason that that got to be popular. That's all of them. There's a reason. What was wrong when we, when you first grew up for them to tell us his name was Yahweh or Jesus? But that's a part of Satan. They get us all saying God. Mm -hmm. Always need to God. That was the time Buddhists would say they didn't believe in God. That's right. Now I ask them about, they say, well, Buddha is my God. I say, no, Siddhartha that's is not God. Siddhartha, Siddhartha left the Hindu religion, well, the Indian religion. On, on the same note, the uh, Islamic community, with that they believe them, don't accept Christ. Well, yeah, we, we know about Jesus. We accept him. When y'all start doing that? When they call him Isa, and they say Isa is the son of Miriam, but Miriam, and they say, is the sister of Aaron. So that can't be Yeshua. God says, oh, what you got? You got a chronological problem. Because you got Miriam, the sister of Aaron, being the mother. That woman lived a long time. <laughs> And then he that one didn't even die on that one didn't die on the tree. He just swooned. He wasn't God in the flesh. And then he was less than Muhammad. That's right. He was less than Kutan, who raped black women, That's who right. took his own stepson's wife, Zaid, because they say Muhammad is the seal of the prophet. Now, how is he gonna be greater? When the Bible says, let God be true and let Muhammad be a lie. Let God be true and let Siddhartha the Buddha be a lie. Let God be true and let Pastor Gray and Tim Mary be a lie. Let God be true and every man be a lie. We, we need to one day sit down and have us some things we're going to discuss, you and I. But uh, we're still waiting for you to speak for us. But I see you, you were tied up in your activities. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then one day I, I think we'd like to have maybe you and Gary then one day we bring different people mm -hmm. up and we'll talk and uh, just just go back and forth with things because there are a lot of statements yeah. that are made like that you know we haven't dealt with evolution yet right. why evolution was so right. big uh, why is it that we got all these denominations uh, what is it? Why are some people now saying that they are Hebrew? Mm -hmm. That's an important thing. That's very important. You know, because if, if it's, it's not the true, rise. then it's a lie. But it is, it is on the rise. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that a lot, it's like we got to determine for, and let our children know in these discussions what the media does. They, they are not innocent. Nobody is neutral in this no. world. 
everybody has a bias. And, and, the, the, go ahead. and the worst part is the media is putting out the lie. Mm -hmm. Deliberately. Mm -hmm. Deliberately. Which is the system of Satan. It is. That's a Luciferian system. I do want to throw out one more question before we yeah. shut down. If you don't want to ask the question, reverse it and ask it to me. How do you feel about all of these Christians saying they hate Donald Trump? No, that's the big thing. Uh, the, the things that are said and that they hate this man and they're Christians. How can you hate something that's the same part, the same as you? Because he Christian. <laughs> oh. Now, I don't hear one of them say I'm a saint or a believer or a follower of Christ, but they're Christian. So how are you going to hate him? Because you're a Christian. You belong to a Christian church. So you can't hate him. Because now you are contradicting yourself, make you a hypocrite. Well, what about they say he had all these other women while he was married or that he paid off some people? But he a Christian. <laughs> What a, well, Christians what, can do that. What about when somebody say he was racist? He a Christian. <laughs> do, 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 you, do you see? Do you see? Every believer saying, and I have to thank y'all for helping me in that area, which I already knew the difference. When we look at the word of God and we begin to talk about those fashioned after Christ, they will call them believers, saints, or followers. So they sanctified. Set there apart. you go. There you go. You don't get Christian until later. That's right. Okay. And then, the, and I, I'm learning how to do like you, man. Is when to use the right terms, because they don't understand. Folks don't understand. Right. In order to help, you got to go in where they at. To the weak, I became as weak. To the Paul Jew, said, I became as a Jew. I all to, things to all people. That I may win a few. But I've been saying this for years. It's like I don't know what people mean when they say Christian. Yeah. I, I don't. I have to ask. Because you look at it, Christian, and the, the view that we know, they do everything. Well, it, but that, and but, nobody held accountable. But the Christianity that was given to we people in America, especially us black people, yeah. was Romanism mostly. Right. right. Romanism. When I say Romanism, Roman Catholicism, and when you talk about the Roman, Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church, and then you talk about the Protestants that protested against them, yeah. Martin Luther, John Calvin, then you go through the Moravians, and then you go through, when you go through the, right. the Anglican Church where Henry VIII separated, then you get the Methodists, and then from there you get John Wesley with John the Holiness Wesley. movement came from through that, and then yeah. you get Church of God in Christ, Church of God Holiness that came from. All of that got a history Nazarene. that goes back. Yes, they got a history that goes back. And the thing is, is that when you start using the term Christian, that Romanism became what is called Christianity throughout the right. world. And so what happened is they did not let people have Bibles for the longest. They did not want them to know that the scriptures taught differently than what they were doing. Right. And so when you say Christian, if you go to some other country and tell people you're Christian, they ought to make them think you're Catholic. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was saying years ago, I've been saying I'm a biblician. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do the Bible. Okay. If a person mean by Christian that I follow the teachings of the Messiah, the Christ, and what he says goes, what he says is true. If he tell me to do, I do it. If don't, the don't. If I don't do what he say, do I'm wrong, then I, I'll accept that. But just to say that I'm a Christian and we all get along, I, I can't say that. As you would say Damnable lie. It is. I like saying damnable lie. I like sometimes I'll say a God damned lie. And yeah. when I say God damn, I say Dean okay to me. Right. Because Jesus said he that believe not shall be what? Damn. So we got to talk like him. We don't think something is damned unless somebody go against us. Let somebody spit on you and see won't you show that you will damn them or condemn them. <laughs> Send them to their maker. We will. But then, but God can't do that. We stupid. But we're Ephesians chapter five. Yes. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear, dear children. children, and walk. Children does what? Obey the parents. Obey. Imitate their parents. 
That's right. And walk in love. So I'm I'm really look I'm looking forward to the day that young people mm -hmm. young people can come and they can get the answer. If we don't have the answer, we look them up. If we don't have this answer, say your question again recorded. There you go. Say your question again and record it. They don't have to accept the answer, right. but we can we give them give the, the butt naked word of God. But I, you know, young people that drink or older people that drink, sometimes they don't want ice in their liquor. They don't want Coke in it. They say, I want it straight without chasing. <laughs> and that's the way we need to start having God's word. But in order to do that, we have to wean them off the milk. It's hard. It's religion. It's hard. And when I say religion, false doctrine mm -hmm. that has been rooted. And that has been the most difficult part, most difficult part to do uproot that's been you, you, you did the more you did the worse it is to try to root it out because it's so deep down there and i come to the point of it's not so much so difficult it's up to the individual to accept the truth last question do you believe you have to obey god's word to be saved yes why Oh, that one that, that was another question. Okay, you said yes. We'll deal with that another time. Because I said last question and I asked another one. Look at Rich back here. What you gonna say, Rich? No, I thought that was fine. Anyway, <laughs> when you look at the uh, Romans 10 9, John 3 16, that's what it says. Leaving your heart, God is raised from the dead, you shall be you saved. Say God so loved the word, he gave his only begotten son. Stop right there. Who word is it? Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, should have everlasting life. Well, who gave, gave the word? Father gave it to the son. And the son did what? Preached it, gave it to the apostles. Okay. Yeah. Well, I hope you all, uh, any of you all have any questions you all want to bring up before I close out? Anybody? I'm surprised I didn't have. I said I know I'm gonna muddy up the water with a good question. Patrick, you no, know, I do it good, but you cut me off at every corner. Well, maybe Patrick, <laughs> Patrick, you got a question to muddy up the water for before I pray and we go. You got a muddy question. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I'll make a comment. All right. I, I, I make a comment, and uh, I'm gonna tell you up front. Y'all supposed to laugh afterward. I'm gonna talk about your favorite. <laughs> 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 you hear what he said? Did you hear what he said? Yeah. My favorite preacher, Arnold <laughs> Murray. The little man. I call him the little man. With the big money. Yeah. And I don't know how many verses died in the Bible, but he said, How many thousands of years if are you going if you going to church and you get one verse a week? Mm -hmm. How many? How long is it going to take you to get the Bible? Mm -hmm. And that, and that, and, and and what you were saying, it uh, it reminded me of that, especially when you were talking about uh, how you feed us. You take, you know, you have value your computer if you need a computer, or whatever, you know. And that thought popped in my mind, and this discussion that you were having, you know that. That that brought the man. So you hear me talking about your favorite preacher every time. Did you? you know, <laughs> so yeah. Same brought in about uh, you had intercourse with the serpent. Yeah, serpent seed doctrine. Yeah, I said, wait a minute, I looked look at all five hundred ways. I ain't seen that. Well, it's because you're not in you're not in tune. That's true. When you get the spirit. You'll be able to see that. I, I know that's right. I now, know that's we're, right. Under, we're not going to identify the spirit yet, which one it is. And you said, that's another thing you said, and I'm going to shut up about this, that uh, you're talking about, you know, you got to have a spirit. I always question folks when they say statement like that to me. I go, what spirit are you talking about? Because mm -hmm. we have a multitude of spirit. I said, which one do you have? What do I have a one? No, you have more than one spirit floating around here. Which one do you have? You, you, in this day and time, we have to ask these questions. You do. And when they say, I'm saved, what do you mean? Yeah. 
you know. Uh, bingo. It behooves us to ask people now when they come up. Uh, one young lady she was trying to tell me about the Bible, and she said, well, I'm saved. I said, well, how do you get saved? I just pray. Pray what? <laughs> My pastor. Who's your pastor? I want to dog. I said, well, darling, you keep doing whatever he tell you, and hell, you will lift up your eyes. <laughs> I guess he got it. Because in, in, in the end time, we don't have time to play games with folk that are being led astray, and, and men are getting filled with the spirit of Satan. You don't have time to play with them. I don't have time to play games. You know, Straightforward, be done with it. Amen. Now, I know Jesus was relaxed and had a good time with the disciples. I believe in that. And uh, But when it comes time to being serious, let's be serious. You got to go? You got to go. <laughs> Father, thank you for the time that you allowed us to spend together and in this together. Thank you for your word, your grace, and your power. Lead us, guide us, protect us and strengthen us with might in the inner man to the praise of the glory of your power. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen. Yeah. Be back. I did, I should, and I thought I had it with me. It, whose here. phone is that right there? That's mine. I take everything. Yeah. Now you you do know we get ready to go eat, right? Yeah, I'm gonna go eat with you. Okay. Because I know you, yeah, you too. You, you too. Well, you all, we're dismissed, and thank you all for another magnificent time. And I'm just, I'm just glad we were able to go through this and start extracting the juice. But we got all these people led by the spirit.